everyone, it's me, Alex. Yes, it is me, it's not an imposter, I uh, got a hair makeover in Japan. Uh, you can check out that video, it's here, I'll put the link in the description box and you can watch the whole thing unfold. But uh, this is this is it, this is me now, I have bangs and I have pastel pink hair. I hope you like it. Anyway, I get a lot of messages and comments from people saying, Alex, I'm a vegan and I want to go to Japan but I don't think I'll be able to eat anything help. So that's what today's video is all about. With the Tokyo Olympics coming up, there's going to be a lot of people coming to Japan for the first time. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people with dietary requirements. So over the past week, I've been putting together some food related content while I'm here in Tokyo. Today's video, you will see me only eating vegan food from 7-Eleven in Japan. Last time I did a 7-Eleven food video, I only ate food from 7-Eleven in Japan for a week. But today's video, uh, you will see me eating the vegan food for approximately 24 hours. Now, this is because I didn't want to throw myself into a week-long challenge without knowing if I would actually be able to find a week's worth of food. It went... well... enough. I had absolutely no idea what to look for, so I went to Google and I typed in vegan food in Japanese 7-Eleven. And a really helpful blog post came up on a website called isitveganjapan.com. Now the post was absolutely packed full of food recommendations from all the convenience stores, not just 7-Eleven, but from Lawson, Family Mart, a couple of others as well. It was super thorough and not only did it have food that is vegan, but it also had food that may look vegan but isn't. So the other day I headed out with my phone in hand with the blog post open with a list in my head of all the things that I was going to eat that day and um well if you keep watching you will see how that all panned out but before we get to that if you are thinking of traveling to Japan and you want to learn some helpful Japanese phrases to make your trip a little bit easier I recommend that you check out an audiobook called learn Japanese a complete phrase compilation for traveling to Japan you can find it on audible Audible is sponsoring today's video and they have a really exciting challenge on right now for current and new members that uh, might just help you if you are planning on learning Japanese as your New Year's resolution. <laughs> if you finish three audiobooks by March the 3rd, Audible will give you $20 in Amazon credit. It's that simple. Finish three by the 3rd of the 3rd and get $20. You don't have to do anything to enter other than be an Audible member. If you'd like to sign up for a free trial, you'll get one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Just head to audible.com slash prettypastel or text prettypastel to 500, 500 There's heaps of Japanese language courses available on Audible. And if you're traveling to Japan or you just want to start off 2020 by learning a new language, definitely check out Japanese, the complete phrase compilation for traveling Japan. You'll learn how to book hotels, take transportation, ask for help, and so much more. So if you'd like to give it a try, head to audible.com slash prettypastel or text prettypastel to 500, 500 And with that, Let's check out my day eating only vegan food from 7-Eleven in Japan. Okay, so I'm back in the hotel from the 7-Eleven. I actually only had to visit one in the end. I did think I'd have to visit multiple to be able to uh, acquire everything that I needed. But the 7-Eleven that I went to had everything that was on my breakfast list at least. So I figured for a well-rounded breakfast, I just wanted to get some fruit, some sort of carbohydrate and a drink and maybe like a, a protein of some sort. So what I've ended up with, I got a black coffee because obviously you need coffee first thing in the morning if you're addicted to caffeine like I am. This one is called UCC Black. It says roasted coffee, 100%, no added flavoring and unsweetened. Some of the black coffees aren't actually black. They have a little bit of milk in them. They're just a dark coffee. So according to that blog post that I've been reading, there were a couple of different brands. I did look for all of them and this is the only one that I was able to find. Next up I got, uh, well, if you saw my last 7-Eleven video, I tried this hazelnut banana milk. 
that was just the best thing ever. This is the same brand. This is called Kinako, which is like roasted soybean flour. This is Kinako with organic soybean. I think it's going to be savory and sweet at the same time. This one is vegan. They do have other things, this brand. They've got the hazelnut one, which is vegan. This one is, but then there's also a strawberry one and that one isn't vegan. Of course, I had to pick up soy joy because I'm a soy boy. Crispy soy joy, this one is a banana flavor apparently. I've got no idea what this is going to be like. There's meant to be a couple of flavors. On the blog post, I think there was at least maybe five or six, but this particular 7-Eleven that I went to only had three different flavors. So I went for the banana. I've also got just some fresh kiwi fruit because I guess fresh fruit is a good way to start the day if you're a vegan in Japan, because you're not gonna find a huge amount else that doesn't contain animal products. There was a lot of different types of fruit in these little bags, but I, I just, I really feel like the kiwi fruit. And uh, last but not least, these are apparently certified vegan. According to the blog post I read, 7-Eleven has announced that their hash browns are completely uh, animal byproduct free. So I picked up two of these. Now all of that food came to a total of about 800 yen, eight US dollars, 10 Australian dollars. I feel like you could probably duck by a vegan restaurant or a cafe and get a breakfast meal for 1000 yen or 1500 yen. So don't feel like you can only go to a convenience store. You're probably gonna have better options just looking on Google and finding vegan cafes. But uh, anyway, if you guys want me to make a video about vegan restaurants and cafes in Japan, please leave a like on this video so I know. Uh, it's a video I've wanted to make for a little while. But uh, anyway, let's let's get stuck in. I think that I think the hash browns will probably be nice. I wonder if they're as good as McDonald's hash browns. Okay, I made a fatal error. I bought it and I didn't eat it straight away. It's cold and soggy. It tastes so bad. Damn it! Not 7-Eleven's fault. This is my fault. I should have eaten it immediately, but my hotel is a little bit far from the 7-Eleven. So, uh, look, I've mentioned this before, guys. It's pretty rude to eat in public in Japan if you're just walking through the streets. You, you don't really see people doing it. It's better to buy your things and then take a seat somewhere. It's raining outside. I did want to sit in a park. You guys might remember the Mosquito Park from my last 7-Eleven video. I was going to risk it because I thought perhaps mosquitoes don't come out in winter. Alas, it was raining, so... The mosquitoes weren't at the park and I can't be there either. It's extremely salty, a little bit oily, and not really my ideal breakfast. Don't know if I'll end up eating the second one this morning or maybe I'll put it in the fridge and then it's just gonna taste even worse. Hmm. This is a real dilemma I've put myself in. All right, so uh, because I'm all salted out now, I really need this fruit. I hope that this kiwi fruit is fresh, like properly fresh. It looks a little bit like it's been in this bag for a little bit too long. Oh, wow. Oh, yum. Oh, so good. I find when you're traveling in Japan, it's very easy to accidentally not eat fruit and vegetables because you're so fascinated by all the food they have here. The yakitori, yakiniku, gyoza, ramen, that you end up focusing on those things and you, you tend to neglect the fruit and the vegetables. Look, even if you're not vegan, I recommend you pick up a bag of fruit at 7-Eleven. Just make sure that you're getting your vitamins, kids, when you're in Japan, because it's very easy to forget. I've got the soy drink that I'm really excited to try. Yeah, it smells like toast. It's because it, it's toasted soybean. You know, if you're in Australia, maybe you've had up and go. This really tastes a lot like up and go. 70 calories. Now something to be aware of, just because it's soy milk in Japan doesn't mean it's necessarily vegan. I did notice on the blog post they said that there are some types of soy milk that are not vegan. This one is, so you're fine if you buy this one. I'd recommend if you've got portable Wi-Fi with you, before you buy anything, double check with one of those articles online because those people that have written those articles have done a huge amount of research. I feel confident having this knowing this is vegan because it, it did say in the article that it is, but don't just go buying any soy milk expecting it's vegan because not all of it will be. Okay, the most interesting thing to me, soy joy. I see advertisements for this all over the place. I see them on train stations, I see them everywhere. Oh, that's a strong smell of banana. Wow. It looks like a little cake. It looks like a, a piece of banana bread almost. It's very, very soft. Oh. Hmm. Tastes like a banana lolly. Not a fan. Really not a fan. I did notice that they had a white chocolate 
hazelnut, I think it was, on the vegan list, which I really wanted that one because I think that would taste really nice. That one wasn't available at the 7-Eleven I went to. I wouldn't have this banana one again. If you're a fan of artificial banana, you, you may like it. It's really unusual. It's got these little rice pops on the... It's really strange texture. It's got all sorts of different shapes and nuts and lumpy things inside. It's crunchy and it's soft. I wonder what the benefits are of eating this. Why is this so popular? This is 115 calories for this little bar. I've just had a couple of bites of hash brown, some kiwi fruit, this drink, and I do actually feel like I'm starting to fill up, so maybe not such a bad breakfast from 7-Eleven after all. And last but not least, of course, the bean juice. I'm wondering if this is going to be very, very bitter. Perfect mug-sized portion in that little can. Please don't take this the wrong way, but as an Australian, I have a very high standard when it comes to coffee. I believe that we have some of the best coffee in the world in Australia. We have very good baristas, we have very good uh, coffee roasteries in Australia. And I know I'm going very, very deep into something that cost one dollar and is basically just used to wake you up. But uh, as a person that worked as a barista for eight years, that's my two cents worth. <laughs> Tastes a little bit bitter. I'm actually thinking maybe, maybe if I put some of this in there, I wonder... I think this is a terrible idea. I can't believe I'm doing this. Not a terrible idea. Hmm. Not a terrible idea at all. Tastes very, very, very good. I think, I think I've just, I've just found a life hack, guys. If you buy a black coffee and you add toasted soybean soy milk, you've just made yourself something that tastes like something you would get at Starbucks. That's it, guys. That's breakfast. Look, it wasn't huge. In Japan, veganism is still very, very new. It's not widely accepted or talked about. It's uh, not on many menus. You know, I get comments from people all the time saying, Alex, I'm a vegan, or Alex, I'm gluten-free, Alex, I'm vegetarian. I want to go to Japan, but I'm worried I will starve to death. You won't starve to death, but you may go home with hemorrhoids. Alright guys, so I'm on my way to lunch now and uh, apparently there are nine 7-Eleven stores in Tokyo that sell a vegan bento lunchbox. So apparently one of the nine 7-Eleven stores that sells it is located in Asakusa. Now it's called the Asakusa Kami Narimon Mae store. This is just opposite the Sensoji temple in Asakusa, so I'll show you guys around there. I found the Kaminarimon Mae store, so let's head in and see if we can find some vegan pasta. Guys, I'm not seeing it anywhere. I'm not seeing it. Does this mean I'm going to go hungry for lunch? Okay, well, on the plus side, they have this, which I know is vegan, because uh, this is just vegetables. Oh yeah, and I guess edamame beans, those are vegan too, but I don't see the pasta anywhere. They must have sold out. Okay guys, I found it. It's right here. Vegetable penne, vegan, except it's in the freezer, so that's why I thought that it would be with all the other food in the middle of the store, uh, but no, it's in the freezer section. But I believe that they can heat it up in store for me, so I'll get them to do that. It is 638 yen, so about eight Australian dollars, nine Australian dollars. I guess that's okay. Excellent news. There is one of my favorite smoothie left. There it is. I've made a terrible mistake because I was looking at the uh, article and I realized this is the one I really like. This is macadamia nuts and maple, but I, I was getting this confused for the one in the article, which is hazelnut and banana. 
So I bought this really excitedly because I love this, but I actually don't know if this is vegan or not. So I'm gonna go onto my little Google Translate on here. Let's see ingredients. Guy. Raw material soybean, transgenic swanky. <laughs> Come on, Google, you can do this. You can do this. Here we go. Yep, swanky. Not turned sugar, dietary fiber, vegetable oils and fats, emulsifiers, potassium, and earth and perfume. Very good. Normally, there's like an allergy. Oh, adarogi down the bottom here. 27 items soy. No, I think it's okay, because I feel like that would say milk if it had a milk traces in there, because that would be an allergen. All right, let's try this pasta that I traveled half an hour for. It's actually really good. We've got zucchini and tomato, herbs. Is that capsicum? Ah, oh, capsicum. I don't like capsicum, but I'll put up with it. The tastiest drink in the world. This pasta is so good. <laughs> it's so nice. If I was vegan and traveling Japan, I think I would just come here, buy a whole bunch of these, keep them in my Airbnb and just eat it every day. It's so nice. It's perfectly seasoned, really rich, perfect amount of salt, pepper, herbs, cooked really nicely. The pasta is soft, it's not soggy, it's not too hard. Mm. I love it. <laughs> So guys, in my 7-Eleven video, uh, a lot of people were complaining about the amount of packaging that they use in Japan. But I do just want to point out that in Japan, they do have a really, really wonderful recycling system. They are on top of their game here. Leaders, I would say, world leaders in recycling. Even in 7-Eleven here, they've got these bins behind me. This one here is Petto Botoru, which is like plastic bottles. They've also got this one, this is for like paper and chopsticks and things like that. Usually, when you come to places like this, they'll have maybe like five or six different categories for their bins. So that 7-Eleven had a seating area. Not all 7-Elevens have places where you can sit, but in these really, really busy areas, some of them do. And that one had a, a really massive seating area. So now that we're done with lunch, we're going over to Sensoji Temple, which is actually directly uh, opposite the 7-Eleven. The 7-Eleven's just there, and the temple is down this walkway here. If you have never been to Tokyo and you're coming for your first time, I recommend that you visit here. And once you've seen it once, I don't think you need to come back. It's a very popular tourist destination. There's a lot of nice little stalls lining the streets. It's a beautiful temple, really nice experience. I've been about five times, but I think once you've seen it once, there's too many tourists to worry about coming back again, but I'm here obviously because I want to show you guys. So uh, let's head over and uh, I'll show you what it's all about. So this is the market street in the lead up to Sensoji Temple. There's a whole bunch of food stalls, there's souvenir shops. It's a beautiful street, it's incredibly busy though. This isn't even a busy day uh, and uh, it's very, very busy. It's like Disneyland. So I do recommend that you visit here at least once, but I'll tell you what, I'll let you in on a secret. The souvenirs are very overpriced. Just bear that in mind.
Well guys, it's uh, I would say my lucky day, but not really because I'm on the vegan diet today. So uh, all the beautiful market stalls behind me won't really help. But I love when you go to festivals or you find these markets on the weekend. They always have the same sorts of food. They're the most beautiful little market stalls. They sell takoyaki, okonomiyaki, yakitori. They sell beef skewers. They sell uh, all sorts of things. I absolutely love them. So uh, if you're not a vegan, I think you would love this. But if you are vegan, I don't think that you would have very much luck finding food at market stalls to suit you. But it's a Sunday here in Asakusa and the stalls are running. If you want to check out Asakusa, then make sure you head here on a Sunday. Well guys, excuse the horrible lighting, I'm down here by the river. This river is just near the Tsukiji fish markets and uh, it's actually a very nice location for me to eat my dinner, or at least what, what little amount of dinner that I do have here with me because I didn't have very much luck finding the different types of onigiri. Now I got the salted rice onigiri but there's also supposed to be a pickled plum and even a seaweed one that is vegan but none of those were available. So tonight's dinner is a smoothie, the salted rice onigiri, and a packet of chips, or crisps as my friends in the UK call them. So first things first, green smoothie. I remember once having one of these smoothies from 7-Eleven and there was so much pulp in it that I could hardly stand it. It does look like it's going to be a nice smoothie, it's got kiwi in it, it's got carrots, it's got a uh, capsicum? No, surely not. Anyway, it looks like it's going to be a very healthy smoothie, so hopefully it doesn't have chunky bits of pulp in it. thick. Oh, she's thick, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Wow. Wow, that is so good. That's actually amazing. I'm definitely going to buy that again. It says it's a green smoothie and then on the front, in English, it says vegetable. It's got vegetables and it's got fruit in it. This is amazing. Now all I need is to head to my yoga studio and uh, I'm on my way to becoming the new me. <laughs> Hashtag blessed. Now, unfortunately for me, what I have here is one onigiri only one. So uh, that's all they had left of the salted rice ball. This isn't going to be very much for my dinner. So what I'm probably going to do before I go back to my hotel, I will duck by another 7-Eleven and pick up some snacks because, you know, any time is snack time as far as I'm concerned. And I have seen an abundance of vegan snacks in 7-Eleven, according to the blog post I've been relying on. Now the thing about this salted rice onigiri, I believe that this one is the vegan one but there are some that are not vegan because they use dashi which is it's kind of like a fish stock so this one should be okay though this doesn't have anything inside it's literally just a ball of salted rice oh <laughs> when they call it salted rice they're not kidding i don't mind it hmm. you know what 
I do still have the edamame from earlier, and I have a couple of sticks of carrot and cucumber and um, cabbage left over as well that I didn't finish because that pasta was so filling. So they might actually pair quite nicely with this plain salted rice. I feel a lot like an anime character right now. Or like a Pokemon. Things are about to get tricky. Ready? Onigiri. Crunchy vegetable. Okay. I know it looks like I'm standing in the freezing cold holding a bowl of rice and munching on a very bland vegetable but I'll tell you what I'm living my best life <laughs> DIY vegan sushi tastes completely fine I believe that concludes the bulk of the dinner but now I do have here a gigantic bag of chips and apparently these are in fact vegan What did humans do to deserve the potato? Potato chips in Japan are on another level. A whole another level of crunch, another level of salt, perfectly seasoned, perfectly cooked, not oily, not dry. They are, without a doubt, I would go as far as to say, the best potato chips in the world. And you can quote me on that. Who needs a proper dinner when you have a giant bag of chips? Oh, and speaking of chips, you may have noticed earlier I had a little tub of chips that uh, I shared with the pigeons and uh, those are vegan as well. They are called Chip Star. There's two flavours that are vegan. The red package and the green package are vegan and they're very tasty. I like them more than Pringles, but uh, they're not as good as these. The 7-Eleven chips, they're just called salty potato chips. Oh, they're so good. <laughs> Thus concludes the dinner ceremony. Now. All there is to do is have a lovely walk along the waterfront uh, and make my way back to the hotel before I freeze to death. So the first snack on the hit list is caramelized sweet potatoes. Oops. Well, did you see that? Well, I've looked everywhere and I can't find that, so I'm gonna have to uh, move on to the next snack. Edamame, I already have that. Okay, I'm looking for these nuts. These nuts. Well guys, things are not looking good for the vegans at this 7-Eleven at least. I have been wandering around in circles for like 10 minutes and I can't find any of the snacks on the list. Okay guys, I don't believe it. I have located something on the list right here. I don't know what it is, but get in my belly. Well guys, um, that didn't go so well. I managed to get a bag of nuts and that miscellaneous bar thing. I don't know what it is. Uh, so now I'm heading to another 7-Eleven. Luckily, there are three of them in this suburb that I'm staying in. So if uh, at first you don't succeed, try, try again, my vegan friends. <laughs> on this list and I can't find a single one. I've been looking and looking. They're not in this place. They're not in the place I was at before. I'm so bummed out because I'm really desperate for dessert. Well guys, I'm back at the hotel after two relatively unsuccessful attempts at getting myself some late night snacks. The first 7-Eleven didn't really provide very much at all. I managed to pick up the bag of Mikusu 
nuts. This one was on the blog post that I read as a certified vegan nut mix. Looks like we've got cashews, walnuts, and almonds in there. I also managed to pick up um, this thing from that first 7-Eleven. This is called Oishi Sasono Mama. 80% off, 80% off, Hershi Nano Nihon de Choco. I believe that this is dark chocolate, some sort of cereal bar, I think. Then when I headed to the next 7-Eleven, once again, relatively unsuccessful. I managed to pick up this. Now, this was on the blog post. This is a brand called Mori Naga, and this is a cacao nuts, so cacao and nuts, uh, and it says makurobi and then biscuito. I don't know what the kanji is, but biscuit. So uh, this seems to be a cacao and nut biscuit. And then the other one, this one says fresh gura so. Grasora. Granola. Granola. I also picked up this. Now, this is a little uh, pot of mango. Now, this wasn't on the blog post. I have been trying to find things outside of the blog post. And I thought to myself, surely, surely a tub of mango can't possibly contain animal byproducts. But, you know, you know just to be double sure, I went on my Google Translate app and unfortunately it just couldn't translate for me. So I proceeded to spend half an hour going through and transcribing every single thing written on the label. I think that's vegan. I think the mango is safe. And of course I have my little leftover soy juice bean liquid here, uh, which I'm looking forward to drinking. So first up, let's try the nuts. Archie will feel very betrayed that I'm here eating almonds without him. Okay, almonds. Crunchy, they are dry roasted, I believe. Yeah, these are not salted. This is my favorite type of almond. When I buy almonds, I normally buy them dry roasted because they're crunchy. And I also don't like them with salt because I watch my salt intake. So this is a great success for me. Delicious. This will really help you out because something I'm noticing, not a whole lot of energy going on today. Really not that much at all. So the nuts will definitely help you out in that department. So, uh, oh, and they're in a resealable bag. Sugoi. So let's try the cereal bar. Alrighty, well that's what it looks like. Don't drop one of these in a swimming pool or you'll frighten everyone. Mmm! Oh! Oh! Mm. Oh, that's the best thing so far. Oh, that's delicious. Is this really vegan? Look, I don't want to spend half an hour transcribing this entire label, but the article that I read said this was vegan. Ingredients. Multitol, cacao mass, cornflakes, vegetable oil, macadamia nuts, dextrin, vitamin E, sweetener, vitamin B6, vitamin B2, vitamin B1, vitamin B12, contains wheat. Dairy and soybeans. Why is it on this list? The company has stated that it contains no animal ingredients, however, it may have cross-contamination from milk, being processed in the same factory or on the same line. Right. So in this case, the warning on the package that makes it look as if dairy is an ingredient only means that particles may be present from cross-contamination. Be sure to get the one in the black packaging as the others have animal ingredients such as milk. Well, look, guys, if you don't mind about the fact that it's made in a factory that has milk in the factory, you're gonna love this. Actually, anyone would love this. This is a best chocolate ever. It's so nice. Even outside of being vegan, I'm gonna buy this like every day that I'm in Japan. This is so good. It's basically, mm, I don't know how to describe it. It's got these little balls that are crunchy, maybe some sort of rice puffs or something. It's also got macadamia nuts in it. I can sort of taste the cornflakes, but not super strong. And then the coating is the dark chocolate, but it's really creamy dark chocolate, and it's not bitter at all. Mm. <laughs> mm. It's so good! I don't know what to say. How many calories are in this? How many of these can I eat safely in a day? 173 calories in one bar. It's the nicest thing ever. And I will be buying that every time I come to Japan from now on. There you go, guys. That's it, that's the tweet.
buy this chocolate bar. So the cacao and nuts. This is a biscuit and I do not think that this is going to be as nice as the heavenly bar that I just ate. But I'll give it a try. Oh, they really are biscuits. Okay. Oh. Oh. They really, really are biscuits. I wasn't sure if it was going to be soft and chewy because it's, you know, got fruit and nuts and stuff, but... A little bit bland. It's super crunchy. Tastes nice. I suppose after coming from that delicious chocolate bar with the cereal, this is a little bit simple. Would I buy this again? Yes, if that chocolate bar wasn't available. But if that chocolate bar was available, I'd buy 10 of those and not eat anything else for the rest of the day. Okay, let's try this um, granola. I have higher hopes for this one because this one has fruit in it. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, there's actually pieces of cranberry in this one. No, not a fan. Tastes a little bit like cardboard with cranberries mixed in. I feel like these must be healthy. Surely they're healthy. Okay, one packet of this is 187 calories. I, I guess this is good for energy. The nuts with the healthy fats will, and the protein will probably keep you full for a long time. These are pretty good. It's the sort of thing where maybe you chuck one of these in your backpack and if you're on the Shinkansen and you're going from Kyoto to Tokyo or something and you know, you need a snack. This will probably keep you going. I would definitely say the be biggest success of the whole day was that chocolate bar I just had. Uh, and now, gonna have a little bit of mango because the amount of processed stuff that I've just consumed needs to be cancelled out. So, this mango comes with a little tiny pitchfork for angry villagers. Well, that tastes delicious. I would buy that just to drink that juice, to be honest. It just tastes like um, stewed mango. It doesn't retain very much of its original mango flavor. If someone gave me this in a little tub and I didn't know it was mango, I think I would say it was peach or maybe nectarine or something because there's just, there's no flavor. There's no distinct flavor at least. I wouldn't get that one again. I guess to, to wrap things up, as far as eating vegan food at 7-Eleven in Japan goes, now, Obviously when I did my I ate food from 7-Eleven in Japan for a week video, that was very successful because you can get huge amounts of food at 7-Eleven and if you have no dietary restrictions, you are not going to go hungry. There's Japanese food, there's Western style food, there's Italian food, there's snacks, there's lollies, there's alcohol, there's everything you could possibly want. You won't go hungry at a Japanese 7-Eleven if you don't have dietary requirements. If you're a vegan or a vegetarian though, you're not going to be able to survive from 7-Eleven, you, obviously you could, but I don't think that your body would thank you for it. Now there are a lot of vegan cafes popping up around Tokyo, so they're a little bit pricey, so maybe my recommendation to you, if you're a vegan and you want to travel to Japan but you've been thinking that maybe you shouldn't because you are worried you're not going to be able to eat anything, I would recommend that you, instead of staying in hotels, that you stay in an Airbnb because there are supermarkets and there's one called The Natural Lawson and Natural Lawson has a, a more heavy focus on vegan food but a lot of it you've got to cook yourself. If you had a microwave, a stove, you know, a cooking area, I think that you would be able to get through your trip okay but if you're wanting to travel from the top of Japan to the bottom and you're not staying in the one place and you're not going to have a kitchen everywhere you go, you will have a difficult time with food and you may end up surviving off plain tofu and fruit the whole time, potentially. That article was excellent and it had a lot of different food items that I could possibly have eaten today. I just couldn't find so many of them. So many of them either weren't available or maybe I just wasn't looking properly, maybe I wasn't looking close enough. The moral of the story is Japan is an incredible country. I would hate to think that there's people missing out on the beauty of this place because of their diet. If you can put up with a bland diet for a short period of time while you're here, or you know, maybe if you want to save up a little bit more money so that you can afford to eat at uh, vegan cafes, for example, you should do it. Don't not come to Japan because you're worried about the food. I did just go a full day finding vegan food everywhere I went. Might not be a very well-rounded diet, but if you're coming to Japan for a week, two weeks, three weeks even, it's the best place in the world and it's worth, you know, putting up with having to eat kind of blandish things while you're here. Please don't miss out on Japan because you're scared that you won't be able to stick to your vegan diet because as I showed you today, you can stick to it. You might just 
have a little bit of constipation afterwards. So anyway guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked today's video, please give us a thumbs up. And uh, also, if you hit that thumbs up, I'll know if you want me to make one of those videos where I eat at vegan restaurants in Japan for a week or something like that. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is Pretty Pastel Please. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mwah!